Hi, welcome to another episode of Let's Live Code. Over this break, I've been learning title cycles, which is a language for live coding patterns. Title cycles itself doesn't synthesize the sound. That is left to Super Collider. What it does, we can think of it as replacing pbind def from the previous videos. It's an extremely elegant protocol that lets you generate complex rhythms and patterns with a very simple and intuitive workflow. Title Cycle requires three different programs to get it up and running. All of these programs can be downloaded at the links below. The first is going to be Haskell, the language that the program is written in. The second one is going to be Atom, and that's where the coding is going to take place. It's the shell for the programming. And the third one, of course, is going to be Super Collider. And you need version 3.7 or later because that has the Super Dirk Quark, which is the engine for processing title. And I will add a link below that guides you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up title cycles. When I was installing title cycles, I encountered a host of issues. Haskell either wouldn't install properly until I had updated something in the terminal called brew. When I wanted to update brew, I had to install another program through the terminal called XYZ. In short, I had to download two other programs just to get one third of the base program to run. Um, and I wanted to say that as a word of caution, but more as a word of encouragement. Don't let that stop you from downloading Title Cycles. Title Cycles is easily the most flexible and accessible live coding environment that I've ever played with. And I can tell you it's well worth spending a couple of minutes downloading other programs through Terminal just to get it up and running. Alright, so once you have all of the programs, you should download the quirks for the Super Dirt Engine and Super Collider. I'm on a Mac, so all of the commands that I'll be showing you are Mac specific. To do that, we open up Super Collider. And from Super Collider, let me just resize these windows a little bit and wait for the uh, help file to load in. We'll resize that. And then we're going to go to Language up at the top bar and select Quirks. And then all you have to do is select the Quirks from the left side of the panel. You want the Super Dirt engine. You can see I've already selected Super Dirt Dowel and Samples over here from the library. And then uh, the button to recompile class library will be active, and you can press that to recompile the class library, or you can shut down Super Collider and start it back up again. And if I start to type in Super Dirt, you can see that Super Collider recognizes that the quirk is properly loaded and wants to finish it for us. This is a good sign. If you see this, you know that you've done something right. If you don't see this, then you need to go back through the steps that we had talked about and make sure that you can get to this point. So I'm going to give it superdirt.start and evaluate that with command E. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't boot the system. Don't do sboot like you normally would in Super Collider. Just go ahead and start Super Dirt. As soon as we see that Super Dirt is listening to title and port 57120, we're good to go. We can go over to Adam and start preparing that for our coding. So let me clean up this window here and X out of... Uh, these things and we'll go ahead and start a new file and we need to save that new file as a title folder you can save it as anything you want I'm gonna save it as tutorial and then we need to make sure it's dot T I D a L and that it recognizes it's a title file and we can go ahead and save that I'm saving it to the desktop the next thing that we need to do is we need to boot title cycles in the menu and to do that I'm going to go up to packages title cycles and boot title cycles we also want to capture the audio from the code so we can hear it uh, to do that we're going to go ahead and record the output of super collider and we did this previously in the other episodes um, by the command s dot make GUI um, we'll go ahead and do that really quick and that will give us something that we can go ahead and record great we'll go ahead and hit record and now an AIFF is being sent directly to our super collider recordings folder all right now that we're ready to code let's live code shall we the first thing that we want to do is to play a simple sample title cycle works by creating a loop that's known as a cycle and by default that loop is set to one second long so if we type this code in, if we type in D1 dollar sign sound and in parentheses we put CP, we can evaluate that code by hitting command enter. 
And what we have now is the sample of a clap that loops once every second. To stop this clap, we evaluate the following. We go D1 silence and command enter. So it's at this point that if you don't hear a clap, go back and troubleshoot where you think the problem is. Don't be afraid to read the outpost window. Copy it and paste it into a Google search engine. Go back through the steps one at a time. Perhaps you missed something. But if you can hear the clap, congratulations, you're well on your way to coding with uh, title cycles. So looking at the above code, it tells us that we're making a sound of pattern of samples and that CP is that pattern. That pattern contains one sound. It's pulling from a folder called CP, which is obviously short for clap. So let's look at where those samples live. If we go back over to Super Collider and from the taskbar, we can click on File, User Support Directory, open the downloaded quirks folder, go to dirt samples, and from here we can see a variety of different samples that are used in title. We can see an 808, um, a 909, bass, birds, clap. Oh, and right here is our clap folder. If we go ahead and open our folder, we can see that there are two files within that folder, and they're indexed in binary code. So the first one would be index 0, and the second clap would be known as index 1, even though there's 1 and 2 respectively. So if you want to, actually, you can replace clap with any of these folders names and you'll get a different sound that you can use for any of your light coding needs. All right, so let's go back over to admin, select that other sample. We can do that with a semicolon and the binary index, which would be one in this case for the second sound file. And now we hear a clap that's much softer. And we can change this in real time by going back to the original sample and evaluating zero. And now we have our original loud clap. All right, congratulations. You are officially live coding in title cycles. Now it's also possible to specify the sample number separately. And to do that, um, we go ahead and erase the semicolon and one and put hashtag n and in parentheses the number of the sample so one for the stopper clap and zero for the louder clap that might not seem better to you because it requires more characters uh, but believe me by separating out the bank and the index number we can apply patterns to them and it's a much more flexible option in fact, um, also, if you want to go ahead and type in, uh, comment your codes out, you can do that with two dashes, and this is a more flexible option. If I would only spell the word this correctly, let me go ahead and fix that. But that's how you can go ahead and comment your code, which please do. Nothing's worse than coming back to code months later, realizing that you don't know what your code does anymore. All right, let's see what happens if we put more than one CP. Now we have a sound that's twice as fast. So what Title Cycles does then is it takes your number of samples and immediately redistributes it evenly in across of a space of one sample. So if we put four of these, we'll have four samples in a second. Or if we double that, it'll get even faster and faster and faster. All right, that's enough of that cheap humor. Anyways, um, so obviously why limit ourselves to just one clap when we have lots of samples that we can choose from. So let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit. We'll choose um, a sample from the folder Pluck. We'll choose a sample from the folder uh, Latibro. We'll choose an industrial folder. That's always pretty fun. There's lots of great industrial sounds in there. Um, and then we'll kind of go back over. Let me copy this. We'll choose another one from Pluck, maybe another one from the industrial folder, let's say 21. Um, there's DI Phone, that's always a good time. We can go ahead and choose uh, one from there. Let me go ahead and resize this a little bit. You can resize the box by seeing uh, Command Minus, Command Plus will make the text bigger. Uh, another Laddie Bro, and we'll do another industrial. And let's hear what this sounds like. So 
since we have all these um, indexes specified directly, we can actually just go ahead and play with the different numbers in the index and get a lot of variation. And of course, uh, you can obviously play more than one stream at a time. And we do that by simply stating a different stream by typing in a different number after D. So D1 represents the first stream of information. Uh, using this method, we have to evaluate everything separately, but that's nice if you want to build layers of things. So if we did a bass drum, that's once every second. Maybe we can go ahead and add a clap to it. All right, and we can double time this by simply copying this over. And now we're going to specify a different stream of information so that bass drum and clap goes at the same time as maybe some hi-hats. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and um, add in a third element, um, maybe something that can kind of get this going a little bit more. And when we silence now, we're only silencing that one stream of information. So I can go ahead and uh, make a silence for the second stream, make a silence for the first stream. And now I have a way that I can directly si either bring in elements or bring out elements and have them all to listen. And if we want to stop all of the elements together, we can do that with a command hush, which immediately stops um, streams one and two. And this is where the beautiful part of Tidal Cycles really comes out, right? Everything's already synchronized, it regularly repeats. Uh, we can pull in or pull in out elements as we, as we want to. And this brings us to the end of this episode. So in the next episode, um, we're gonna look at implementing rhythms inside each of these cycles and how to get more dynamic patterns. Thank you for joining us in this episode. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below and take care.